Hey guys, Megan here, and time for another book review. First off, ignore any noises you hear in the background, I have company. Ooh, so, hey. so, this week I am going to be talking about this. It is The Reality Bug, which is book four in the Pendragon Adventure series by DJ McHale. Now, we pick up more or less where we left off last time. Bobby is going to the Flume with Gunny to go to v because they found out that St. Dane is there now. So, when they get to v St. Dane is there, and he's just leaving, because he's claiming this is already a victory for me. v is about to crumble, and I didn't even need to do anything. So, Bobby and Gunny try and stop him, but they don't, and he goes to a territory which I believe is pronounced Elong. So, Gunny's like, I should probably go to Elong and see what's going on there and get a feel for the situation. So, Bobby stays on v to see what the deal going on there is. He meets the traveler there who is named Asia Killian and I'm pretty sure I said her name wrong but whatever and she tries to send Bobby away despite the fact that she called him for help and she claims that she has everything under control. So the technology on v is like super impressive. They have basically virtual reality and holograms and all this fun futuristic shit that we could only hope to have. So with this awesome technology, this one man on v created this thing called Life Light. And you basically go in this little tube thing and go into your own imagination, into this own little world of your own making. And this is addicting, which, you know, is understandable, because Life Light is perfect. It's like the I ideal situation. It's the ideal situation of whatever you want. So pretty much the whole territory, except for a few people, are in lifelight. It's getting to the point where so many people are in lifelight. There's not enough people like there to grow the food or produce much needed things, or to watch the people in lifelight jump. These trips in the lifelight are known as jumps. And basically the whole territory is slowly crumbling because of this. So Asia, she's like a big important person in the lifelike pyramid in her city. And she's realizing, yeah, this shit's not good. So she created this virus to throw into lifelight, not just the one in her city, but all over Velox. And ho basically the idea of this virus is to make the jumps less than perfect. She tests it out on Bobby and things went a little too well. We yeah, find out <laughs> We found out that St. Dane somehow messed with the reality bug to make it like super intensely powerful. He gave it steroids. Kids <laughs> don't do drugs. He made it super powerful so Basically, it's putting all the jumpers at risk. Or if and, they die in their dream, they die in real life. Yeah, if they die in the jump, they now will die in real life. If they get hurt in the jump, they get hurt in real life. Didn't Where, I see this in the Matrix? Shut up. So, well, before, if you died in a jump somehow, you just woke up. Now, you die, you actually die. So, things getting bad, Asia cannot, like, override the bug. So she suspends the grid, which basically puts everyone who's in a jump in suspended animation for a long time. So their only hope is to go into the jump of the creator of Life Light, who has been in his jump for three years. So Bobby is going to go into that jump, but he doesn't want to go alone. Asia can't go because she has to oversee the jump. Pussy. So Bobby goes to Zada and asks Lore to come with him. So, Zetlin, who is the creator of Lifelight, he's an old man now. So, they go into his jump, and they're trying to find him. Alright, so there's going to be spoilers now. So, if you don't want spoilers, I highly suggest you click away now. So, Bobby and Laura go into the creator of Lifelight, Dr. Zetlin's jump. And they look for him, they find him, and they try and get this code from him, which will purge the entire system of life light of the reality bug, in theory. And basically make it safe for them to unsuspend the grid. Satlin is a little unwilling to give them the code, because he, he doesn't want his entire life's work of life light to crumble around him. So, 
after a while they do convince him the reality bug takes over his illusion dream so he's in danger now so they're all like crap more like ha now you're screwed too so you gotta help us <laughs> that too so they managed to get Bobby, Lore, and Zetlin out of the jump just fine. And by some miracle, defeat the reality bug. Yay! And, you know, they managed to shut down Life Flight for good, supposedly. And things are going good, you know. It seems like it's a victory again for the travelers. But then there's this big, like, gathering and stuff to basically reintroduce Zetlin to Velox. But in that little meeting... Who Some turns up Saint Dane, because he's an asshole. <laughs> director, the directors of Life Flight in Rubik City basically said, by the way, Life Flight's back online now. So Asia, Bobby, Lore, well, Lore goes back to Zidasa, not her. And Zetlin are just like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? No one told us about this. So they basically try and rush in there to shut Life Flight down again permanently. But their access to Life Flight has been denied. And we find out that St. Dane is one of the directors and he basically orchestrated for this to happen. So basically, Velox is a loss for the travelers. Bobby wants to stay and kind of like try and help fix things again, but he's needed on Elong. Gunny is still there. He hasn't heard back from Gunny. So Bobby is like freaking worried. So throughout all this, Mark and Courtney are trying to become acolytes, which basically help the travelers. They are the ones that they're the travelers' bitches. They're the ones who the travelers send their journals to. So, and they leave the clothes and the stuff behind for the travelers and everything. Like I said, bitches. Mark and Courtney are going to the flume to leave some second earth clothes there for any traveler who stops by. And Saint Dane comes through the flume, and he's all like, "Yeah, I'm an asshole." And he's all like gloating because he won a territory. And because he won one territory, it fucks everything up. Once the first domino falls, the rest will crumble, like he said before. So the world's going to be changing now, and it's going to fuck everything that Bobby already knew up. Things aren't going to be good. Bobby is freaking out because he knows the rules have changed now. St. Dean leaves behind a little bag of git. A little bag of goodies just for them. Left like a bag for Mark and Courtney to give to Bobby. And the moment St. Dane flumes away, Bobby comes in and he's wearing these rags and smells disgusting. And Mark and Courtney are like, what the hell happened to you? Dude, you look like a hobo. Get out of here. And he was just like, wait for my journal. I can't explain now what the hell is going on. And they're like, we don't know. We don't know. And Bobby, Bobby reminds them, don't activate the flumes. And they're like... We can do that anyway. And he's like, well, the rules are changing now. So still, don't do it. You will mess things up if you do. So they're like, okay. And they're freaking out because Bobby is like super serious and freaking out. So they know shit's not good. And they give Bobby the bag St. Dane left behind. And it's Gunny's severed hand. Why we know it's Gunny's hand is because his traveler ring is on it. So Bobby's his like, head? hand. He didn't give his head? What a loser. <laughs> So Bobby's like, shit. So he flumes back to Elong, and we don't know much else what happens after then, because that's kind of where the book ends. Things are getting real now, guys. Things are getting serious. And I can't wait to read the next book, which is Blackwater. So yes, I'm still loving this series, and yes. That is all I can really say about this book, so... Still love it, still recommend it, and yes. Get out there, read it now. Buy a copy at your local bookstore and support reading everywhere. This what? message has been brought to you by PBS. What he said, but not really. About the PBS part. Go out and read, though. Reading is fun. Reading is good. Go read. But don't steal trademark shit. That gets you in trouble. That, too. That is also a very important life lesson. So that is it for this week's book review. If if you have any further book suggestions for me to read, let me know, and I'll see you guys next week. See ya!